Good evening, visitors, and welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post ceremony. My name is Jared Pratt, and joining us today from the Royal Australian Navy is Warrant Officer Nikolai Roth. This evening, we commemorate the 78th anniversary of the loss of the Australian light cruiser, HMAS Perth, and more than 350 members of her crew in the Battle of the Sunda Strait on this date in 1942. The bell that you heard being struck was recovered in 1975 from the wreckage of HMAS Perth 1. On the 28th of February, HMAS Perth and the heavy cruiser USS Houston were making their way to the southern coast of Java. Late that evening, they encountered the Japanese Western Invasion Convoy at the northern entrance to the Sunda Strait. The convoy was escorted by a large Japanese flotilla with two light cruisers, eight destroyers and a mine layer, supported by another four cruisers, an aircraft carrier and further destroyers. Heavily outnumbered and soon running low on ammunition and changing course constantly to avoid attacks from every direction, the Australian and American crews fought desperately against impossible odds. Together, Perth and Houston succeeded in sinking a Japanese transport and a mine layer, and they severely damaged a further three transports. But under the weight of Japanese numbers and superior firepower, the end was inevitable. Japanese ships launched 85 torpedoes during the brief encounter. Perth suffered her first hit from a Japanese shell at 11.26 p.m. Soon after midnight, the first torpedo struck. With her crew reduced to firing practice shells and illumination star shells, when a second torpedo hit Perth shortly afterwards, her captain ordered, abandon ship. Perth was hit by two more torpedoes before finally sinking at 25 minutes after midnight on the 1st of March. The action was all over in just under an hour from the time the first round struck. Meanwhile, HMAS Houston continued to fight. Sorry, USS Houston continued to fight. Although ablaze from enemy fire, she was rent by shell and torpedo explosions and, and sank just 20 minutes later. The captains of both vessels perished with their ships. Of the complement of 686 men in HMAS Perth, more than half, over 350 officers and ratings, perished in this, her last action. Of the 320 survivors captured by the Japanese, one third died during their long ordeal as prisoners of war. Of the more than 1,000 American officers and men in USS Houston, less than 400 escaped their sinking ship. Only 266 of them survived the harsh regime of brutality and starvation in Japanese prisoner of war camps. Australian sailors would undoubtedly wish us to remember their brave American comrades today as well. Together, we remember the brave sailors of both vessels as well as those of other Allied warships, Australian, British, American and Dutch sailors who were lost in the series of engagements in the Java Sea while attempting to repel large Japanese invasion forces. We warmly welcome the family of Surgeon Lieutenant Commander Ellen Charles Tregor of HMAS Perth, whose story will be told shortly. We're honoured to acknowledge Captain Bruce Legg on behalf of the Chief of Navy and the Royal Australian Navy. Captain Matt Ort, US Naval Attaché, US Embassy. Mr. Frank St. John, Executive Vice President, Lockheed Martin, Rotary and Mission System and the accompanying delegation. We're also honoured to welcome Mr. Alex McGowan of the Naval Association Australia, Mrs. Jan Chataway and Mr. Jack Aaron and members of the HMAS Perth Association, Ms. Catherine Sperling on behalf of Defence Widows and War Widows, and particularly today, we would like to welcome all current and past serving naval personnel who are in attendance this evening. As always, we welcome all veterans who have served, those that are still serving, and the families that love and support them. 
We acknowledge the members of RSL and Services Clubs Association, RSL Victoria and RSL Queensland who are watching the broadcast of this ceremony from across Australia. During this evening's ceremony, wreaths will be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection by family, visitors and students on behalf of the following schools. In the Australian Capital Territory, Canberra, Grammar, Canberra Girls Grammar School, from Victoria, Gladstone Park Secondary College, and from Queensland, Somerville House, Primary Department, South Brisbane. Australia's Federation Guard is a tri-service ceremonial unit of the Australian Defence Force. They provide a ceremonial presence at civil and military events and during visits to Australia by foreign dignitaries. The Guard will now dismount the catapult party from the tomb of the unknown Australian soldier. If able, please stand and join in singing the national anthem.
students, please be seated. Guests, please be seated. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's first World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through until the end of the war. The idea of this national memorial and museum came to him at Pozieres, France, in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families and friends could mourn loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that could help all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision, to which we remain true, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit in the heart of the land they love, and here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight, we will read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists the names of more than 102,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and on operations for more than a century. But first, we present a lament, Flowers of the Forest. Wreaths or floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection.
Today, we remember and pay tribute to, Lieutenant Com to Surgeon Lieutenant Commander Elaine Charles Trigger. Elaine Trigger was born in Melbourne on the 2nd of February, 1903. After attending Geelong Grammar, Trigger attained a Bachelor of Degree of Dental Science at the University of Melbourne. After a period practicing as a dentist in Horsham, Victoria, he joined the Royal Australian Navy on the 4th of January, 1927. Trigger began his naval career with the rank of Surgeon Lieutenant at HMA Cerberus, an RAN base just south of Melbourne, which served as the primary training establishment for naval personnel. After periods at HMA's Penguin and Platypus in Sydney, on the 10th of December, 1930, he married Kathleen Estelle Young at the Presbyterian Church in Horsham. The couple went on to have a daughter, Barbara, who was born in 1934. By then, Doc, as he was known, had been promoted to Surgeon Lieutenant Commander. After a period serving on HMAS Australia in 1935, he joined the recommissioned HMAS Brisbane, which sailed for England with a complement which formed the balance of the ship's company of the new HMAS Sydney. On Brisbane and then Sydney, Trigear was noted as being a reliable and capable officer and of a cheerful disposition and a pleasant messmate. He acted as secretary of the wardroom mess, which did much to increase his shipmates' opinion of him. On the 11th of October, 1941, Trigear joined HMAS Perth, one of the three modified Leander-class light cruisers used by the Royal Australian Navy during the early part of World War II. By then, Perth had patrolled the Western Pacific and the Caribbean in search of German shipping and escorting convoys. Perth transferred to the Mediterranean fleet and helped escort convoys to Malta and played a role in the Battle of Cape Matapan. Perth escorted convoys to Greece and Crete and helped to evacuate Allied troops in the face of the victorious Axis forces, which was badly damaged by Axis aircraft during the evacuation of Crete. Trigger joined Perth after it had returned to Australia for permanent repairs. With Captain Hector Waller now assuming command, early in 1942, Perth sailed from Sydney, joining an escort for a convoy of four tankers and two cargo vessels on a mission to claim oil from the Dutch East Indies before the Japanese invaded. The Japanese invasion was swift as it was effective. Two weeks after the fall of Singapore, Perth and the heavy cruiser USS Houston were making their way along the southern coast of Java, the only large Allied ships to have survived the Battle of the Java Sea the day before. They had retreated and attempted to resupply, having been ordered to sail to Tilbetap via the Sunda Strait. On the evening of the 28th of February, they encountered the Japanese Western Invasion Convoy at the northern entrance to the Sunda Strait escorted by a large Japanese flotilla of two light cruisers, eight destroyers, and a mine layer, supported by another four cruisers, an aircraft carrier, and further destroyers. Heavily outnumbered and running low on ammunition and changing course constantly to avoid attacks from every direction, the Australian and American crews fought against impossible odds. Together, they sank a Japanese transport and a mine layer, then severely damaged another three transports. But given the weight of the numbers and superior firepower of the Japanese force, the result was inevitable. Perth suffered a first hit from a Japanese shell at 11.26 p.m. Half an hour later, Captain Heck Waller ordered his ship to try and force a way through. But with her crew reduced to firing practice shells and elimination star shells, Captain Waller was forced to give the order to abandon ship. Perth was hit by two more torpedoes before sinking shortly after midnight. USS Houston continued to fight on, sinking 20 minutes later. Perth lost 350 officers and men, including a Captain Hector Waller, DSO, and Surgeon Lieutenant Commander Alain Trigar, who was 39 years old. His name is listed on the Roll of Honour on my left, among almost 40,000 Australians who died while serving in the Second World War. His photograph is, dis is displayed today beside the pool of reflection. This is but one in many of the stories, service and sacrifice told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Surgeon Lieutenant Commander Alain Charles Trigar, who gave his life for us, for our freedoms and in the hope of a better world.
Please stand for the reading of the ode and the sounding of the last post. They have no grave but the cool sea, no flowers lay at their head. A rusting hulk is their tombstone, vast on the ocean bed. They shall grow not old as we that are left to grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Ten o'clock party, present up. Lest we forget. Lest we forget. We leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many a man lying out there at Pozier, or in the low scrub at Gallipoli, with his poor tired senses barely working through the fever of his brain, has thought in his last moments, well, well it's over. But in Australia, they will be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, students, that concludes the last post ceremony. Thank you for visiting the Australian War Memorial and we wish you all a very good evening.